Welcome back. Back in the day, 24th and Lake in North Omaha was the place to be for art and jazz. But over the years, it fell off the map, but now some local groups are making it their goal to bring it back. Lindsay Thies is there with the story. Lindsay, what could you tell us about this? Well, Emily, I'm here at Loves Jazz, that's at 24th and Lake, and they're just one of the many organizations in this area really working hard to revitalize this neighborhood. I'm with Tim Clark, you are the executive director yes. with Loves Jazz, and you, you were telling me you weren't here in the heyday, but between all the stories and everyone who has come in, you know, what can you tell us about what this intersection really used to be like? Yeah, you know, once, once upon a time, this area was known as a national jazz hub. And so, you know, with, with many different clubs and we were kind of like in the center of the country. So a lot of national honors would come here for a layover and it just turned into this vibe, into this live and vibrant uh, renaissance that took place in the 40s, 50s and 60s right here on, on the corner of 24th and Lake Street. So we're real excited about what was what is in our future. Wonderful. And there's been a lot of work a couple years in the making in terms of making that what was to now what will be. Take a look. At 24th and Lake, chances are if you don't have to be here, you're not. This is a, a tribute piece of uh, the late Wanda D. Ewing. One local artist is among many North Omahans trying to change that. Benson grad Reggie LaFleur says he knew he always liked art, but only started his large scale stencils a couple of years ago. I just didn't realize how big of a scale you can do a lot of this stuff, and so I got inspired. Now he's among those nominated for an Omaha Entertainment Award Best New Artist. But he says it's also important to think of 24th and Lake as a place of culture instead of crime scenes. It's really all on just changing how people feel. That feeling of change has other organizations getting involved too. Bemis Center for Contemporary Arts has brought in international artists like Def Jam artistic director Say Adams. All these young people have talent and they just need an outlet to express themselves. And photographer Jeanette Beckman to lead workshops. There's Love's Jazz, a musical growing grounds, and The Union, where LaFleur is exhibiting about a dozen pieces he's collaborated on. All in all, there's still several vacant buildings in what was the cultural boom in the metro during the late 60s, but LaFleur says if anyone can bring this area back, it's artists. They, they take a look at the surroundings. They take a look at what's going on in the environments and all this uh, sort of injustice and things that are, you know, that, that are going on. That's what I got from it. And now those are nonprofits, but there are a lot of businesses that have popped up too, restaurants, barbershops, that kind of thing. Um, as far as Love Jazz here, since they are a nonprofit, they have a fundraising event coming up on November 14th. We have more info on that online, as well as some of the other areas around here that are kind of on the up and up. We're going to send it back to you, Emily. Thanks, Lindsay. That was a neat profile, and that was great to see yeah. what once was now is going to be. And it what may be a spark. Yeah. It could be a spark for a lot of other things to start happening. It sounds like it already is. It does.